Now, when we're assessing risk, we have to have a basic measure of, of volatility. And one of the easiest and most simple measures of volatility that you can plot on a screen in a very simplistic manner is true range. And so true range is basically the maximum distance of trading between two bars. Uh, a lot of been, has been published about this. A lot of indicators use true range. Almost all of the case indicators for both Statware and CaseX use true range. And so true range is something that we use as a basic measure of volatility. And it's going to help us not only determine where to place our stops, but also what bar length we can trade. Now we actually use something called true range double, the formula of which is at the bottom of the screen here. Uh, so it's basically the maximum distance of trading between three bars rather than two. And the reason we do that is it gives us a little bit of a smoother distribution whenever we're looking at true range. So it's very similar to the Wells Wilder true range. It's just a, a, a little bit of a take that Cynthia came up with when she started designing uh, case statware back in the early 90s, late 80s, early 90s. Now, one of the things that the case stops do um, is they address the variation in volatility or the variation uh, in the variability in the uh, distributions of volatility. So if we're looking at average true range, a lot of people, at least traditionally, had used multiples of true range. That's the way Wells Wilder talks about it in his book. And so multiples of true range, that's fine. But if we're looking at the average true range and the average is, you know, 10 cents, then if, you know, one times 10 cents is going to be 10 cents, two times 10 cents is going to be 20 cents, three times 10 cents is going to be 30 cents. But that does not account for variability um, or the skew in the distribution of, or the bell curve, or the distribution of volatility. So what we do is we use standard deviations so that we're looking at a statistically probable level. So if we're looking at one, two, or three standard deviations, you know, it's not necessarily the same as a one, two, or three times standard deviation, or three times the uh, average true range. We're looking at, for instance, the 65th, 95th, and 99.9 percentile of the distribution of volatility over a given period of time, in our case, usually the last 30 bars. So that's just a, a minor point to make on why we use standard deviations when we're looking at the true range rather than multiples of true range. Okay, so this is just really I should have come to this chart next, but this is this is showing us kind of that distribution. So if we have two different levels, like a one standard deviation or 1.2 standard deviation above the mean, that's going to be right around the 65th percentile. So risk adverse traders might use that. And then if we're looking at writing the trend, we might use somewhere around a 3.8 standard deviation. We're accounting for the right-hand skew. So the distribution of volatility is always skewed to the right. We adjust our stops. So if, we're using, if we want to use a 1, a 2, and a 3 standard deviation move, we're usually adjusting by about 10% at each standard deviation level. So 1, 2.2, and 3.6. In this case, we're using 1.2 and 3.8. Nonetheless, the idea here is we have to adjust for the right-hand skew but also that by using standard deviation, we're using statistically significant levels for our stops rather than just arbitrary multiples of true range.